Hi there, Ram owners. Today in your 2022 Ram 2500, we're gonna be taking a look at and showing you how to install Torque Lift's front hitch. And this is what our hitch looks like when it's installed. The license plate that you see here is actually installed on a bracket that comes included with the front hitch. So you really can't even tell that it's there when you're not using it because it just looks like a license plate there. But if we go ahead and pull out the pin, there's our 5 8 inch pin for securing our accessories. Our bracket will slide out with our license plate on it. And now we can secure our accessories to our hitch right here at the front. And you can see that it doesn't stick out beyond the front, so we're not adding any additional length to the front of our vehicle. Nothing we need to worry about when pulling this in the garage and having to be prepared for additional length. And also once we do pull in and we go to walk around the front of our car to get inside, it doesn't stick out so we don't have to worry about anything hitting our ankles when we're walking by it. And our front hitch here is a two inch by two inch receiver. So it's great for all various types of accessories. Um, the most common things that people use these for here at the front is for like your over the cab extensions. You can put those here in the front for your ladder racks to extend those across the front. And the other thing that's real big that people use these for is actually just for maneuvering trailers into really difficult uh, to park locations. Because when you're steering here with your front wheels, you can really swing that trailer um, much more drastically and uh, line it up than you can when you're pulling it from behind. You just got a lot more ways to, to maneuver it around. So a lot of guys really like it for that. They got some big campers that they, you know, they take on their trips and when they get home, they like to park it out of the way as best they can, maybe into a little nook next to the house, but maybe you got some trees and stuff there. That's where this guy really comes in handy. You get a spotter watching things and you can really maneuver um, just so much better from this side. Uh, another thing that I do see people using this for is for quick winches. You can get winch mounted adapters that it slide into your hitch. So you'll, that way you can put it in the back or in the front to get some various different options for getting you or a buddy out of a sticky situation. And I've also got some measurements here to help you when deciding on your accessories. From the center of our hitch pin hole to the front of our grill here, looks like we're at about five and a half inches. And that's important when determining if your accessories will contact the bumper here in the front when inserting it into the receiver and pinning it in place. And from the ground to the top inside edge of our receiver tube, we're looking at about 17 and three quarters of an inch. And that can just be important um, if you're worried about certain ground clearances when uh, maybe using that winch or something like that, just to make sure that you know you can go over the terrain and the locations you're planning on using this. Now that we've covered some of the features of our hitch, if you want to follow along with us in the shop, we'll show you how to get it installed. Now we are going to be installing this on a truck that does not have an intercooler down below. Um, so there is some various changes throughout the instructions that you'll need to follow depending on which engine and options that you have to make sure that you're following along for the appropriate ones for your truck. Uh, but ours is going to be a 6.4 liter today, so if you've got the same one, things are probably going to line up just like ours. We'll begin our installation here at the front of the vehicle. We're underneath the front right here. We've got our license plate attachment just to the outside of your license plate on this under air dam here that goes across the bottom this plastic portion you're going to have a push pin so there's one on each side of the license plate and to remove this we're going to take our trim tool just pull outward on the center tab there that'll pop that out and sometimes the entire clip pops out but if it doesn't then we're just gonna get our tool under it and pop it out of there as well and if they do separate you can take both halves and put those back together it's not broken or anything so we've got this piece here there are little um grooves so you do need to line the grooves up and then they just push back together you don't want to push it all the way in though because you want it in the release position so we can reinstall it later we'll remove the other one on this on the other side over here and then we're going to head around to the other side on the back side of our air dam here to remove some more fasteners and you can actually push from the back side to remove those as well. So we're now on the other side of our air dam here. Those plastic push pins we just took out, they actually attached right into these brackets. There's one on the other side the same way like that, just uh, for reference where we're at. Now we do need to remove all the nuts that are going along the top here. They're gonna be a 10 millimeter socket that we're gonna use to remove them. And that way we can get this paneling off of here. You do have a couple other bolts that are larger here. We don't actually need to take those out. So just the 10 millimeter uh, nuts. So we'll use our ratchet here and just zip all these out of here.
There are gonna be several. We're probably looking at, we got four here, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So there's probably about 14 of these. Once we got all the nuts removed, the panel will hold itself up there. Um, right where the frame is, when you go forward, there's gonna be a clip kind of right there. And there's one in the same location on the other side. So we're gonna pull down. If you look at the clip though, it's got a little metal tab there. We can press in on that metal tab to kind of release it as we're pulling down. And it can be difficult to get these to just pop out of there. Sometimes you can take your trim tool and stick it underneath, kind of around it and pop it out that way as well. That looks like we're still kind of stuck there. There is another tab on the other side of that. So if you can get something on each side to press it, that works. But a lot of times you can just pull downward and get those to release if you just do one of them. We're gonna try and reach around the other side to get the other tab. There it is, we were able to get it on each side. It just pops right down out of there. And here you can kind of see those little tabs that we were talking about that kind of just stick out. So we're gonna release the other side the same way. Once you pop out that other side, this whole piece really isn't gonna be supported in there anymore. Um, so just make sure you're ready for it so you can grab it and set it aside. All right, get it popped out of there. stuck and then just pull downward and then we'll set this aside where it won't get damaged. We are going to have to make some modifications to this piece before we reinstall it. We're now going to shift our attention to the other side of the frame. We're still going to be underneath the vehicle. We're going to start on our driver's side, but we're going to be looking at the outside of the frame here. So you probably want to be looking in uh, right in front of the wheel on this side. Now on this, we need to remove a few bolts. We're gonna to need to remove this lower one here. We're gonna use an 18 millimeter socket for that and you might need a wrench for the nut on the other side. If we go up from there, this bolt here and the other one located here, these are for our tow hooks. We're gonna be removing those in the tow hook. We'll use a 15 16 or 24 millimeter for those. And then also these two down here. And those are also gonna be 15 16 or 24 uh, millimeter, depending on what you got there. So now we're gonna crack each one loose. If you can get your bigger tools up in here, that'd be awesome, um, but it's probably gonna be pretty tight. So let's see, we just gotta find the best spot to go at it here. Probably something like that. Can we ratchet it a little bit longer. And we can get that started out of there. Once we crack it loose, we should be able to switch to another tool to more easily remove this. We're gonna go ahead and crack loose though, all those big bolts as well, and then hopefully be able to switch to a, a nicer tool to remove them more easily. We put our 18 millimeter back on for that one lower one. All right, and I was holding the nut with an 18 millimeter wrench on the other side. We can go ahead and slide that bolt out. Now I'm gonna remove the other ones that we had loosened up up there as well. So we'll switch over to the appropriate size there and get them removed. And after you remove both of these bolts and the nuts there, this piece should come down with it. Set that aside. We're just kind of supporting that. You might have to lift it up or down slightly to get the bolts to slide out, and then this will slide out the front of the vehicle. And we can set that aside as well. Now all the stuff that we just did on this side, we are also going to be doing on the other side. And we did kind of skip over a little part here because um, we didn't have to do it, but your vehicle could potentially be equipped with an intercooler, which would be located up in this area right here. We got a lot of room to work, but if you have an intercooler, you're going to have a lot less and there is some minor trimming that you need to do to the 
uh, the air dam that goes around the intercooler for your components to fit. You won't be seeing us doing that today, so you want to refer to your instructions if you do have an intercooler. So now we can go ahead and start installing our side plates. Now, if you have a turbocharged model or if you didn't have these brackets that were in place here, or if you don't have tow hooks, you'll want to refer to your instructions because the way you feed in your hardware is going to be slightly different amongst those variations. So we, we have a naturally aspirated, we don't have a turbo, we did have the vertical brackets and we did have tow hooks. So if you've got the exact same truck, yours is going to be exactly like ours. But if yours is a little bit different, you might, there'll be slight uh, differentiations in the hardware that you're going to use. So we're going to get our bracket in place. It's going to roughly sit like this. Our holes line up back where the ones that we removed. These are the bolts that we're going to push through first. So go ahead and take a washer. We're going to put that on two of those. We'll get two of them prepared here first. These guys are going to attach where the vertical brackets were, which is going to be these holes right there. Now on the other side of this plate, we want to put one of these spacers in place. I want to make sure all the holes line up. So go ahead and push it on there. Make sure that that top hole there uh, also lines up with the plate. We can now go ahead and slide this piece into place. So just line up your bolts with the existing holes there. Slide it on in. And then on the opposite side, we're going to use a flat washer on each bolt, followed by a lock washer, and then one of the nuts. And when putting these together, you don't want to run your bolt down real tight right now. We need it to be loose for installing our other components so that way they fit. So we're just going to run this up there just about until like that or something. We want to make sure we still got some play. We may even want to loosen them more than that, but uh, we'll just leave it about right there for now. Now, the upper holes here, those two were for our tow hooks. We're going to be using these bolts. The more gold colored bolts were standard bolts and they had dashes in the top of the head of the bolt. You can see that there. And then we've got our metric bolts here that has a number on it, 10.9. The metric ones you'll use if you have tow hooks because they thread right back into the factory nut. This was the factory nut. So we're going to go ahead and take these. They're going to get a washer as well. We're going to just slide back on through, but we are going to reinstall our tow hook. Slide that back into the opening. There we go. And now we just need to get our tow hook to line up with the holes there. So you might have to move that around a little bit. We're actually going to use our tool here to kind of lift up on the back of this a little bit. I might get a different screwdriver or something that fits in the hole a little better to help lift that up. There we go. And while we've got that lifted up, we're going to grab the bolt that we put our washer on and slide it through the hole. Until it comes out the other side. The other bolt We'll then do another bolt and do the same thing and bring it through the other slot here. There we go. Once we get through, those are going to thread into the factory nuts, which is these guys here. And they have this little L that needs to fall into that groove for this bolt. And then this guy here is going to sit down like that with the tab hitting on the frame right there. So just put your nut in place. You can't spin the nut since it has a tab. So thread your bolt into the nut and we just need to get it started. We want this to be loose so we can maneuver it. So we're going to do the same thing with the other bolt. Just get it started. All right. We got both of those started. We've got our other bolt here that we still have to put in place. This is going to be a smaller diameter. If we hold it up to those other ones, you can see it's much smaller diameter, similar length though. This is going to get a washer on it as well, but it's a smaller washer that's the appropriate size for this bolt. And it's a metric you can see there by the 10.9 written on it. We'll slide this from the outside as well. 
right through the hole that we removed the smaller factory bolt from. And we're actually gonna thread this right back into the factory nut. So we saved that there, threaded it on our factory bolt. We're now gonna thread it onto this new bolt. All right, so we've got all the hardware now on this side loosely installed. So we're gonna repeat this same procedure over on the other side to get our plate loosely installed on that side. So now that we've got our side plates on, we're getting pretty close to being able to put that whole main assembly up there and bolt it on. But we are gonna modify this cover here and trim out so that way when we slide that piece up in there, it fits through our air dam here. So we're gonna prepare this first and we got a little bit more preparation at the front of the vehicle before we put that in there. I've gone ahead and marked out the area that we need to trim and now we're just gonna cut it out. We're gonna use a pair of snips, but you can use whatever you've got available. Um, if you've got like a cutoff wheel or a uh, small reciprocating blade, all that stuff would work very nicely. Um, but I've had a lot of success by just using snips. Okay, and then we'll cut that down and around here as well. And you do find a diagram of what we are trimming in your instructions. And now that we've got that all cut out, I'll take a file to it just to smooth out any edges and we'll clean off any markings that we made on there uh, to make it nice and clean again. Now that we've got our panel trimmed out, we can go ahead and reinstall it. I always like to wait until this point here just because that way it's out of our way while we're working. So we can just poke this back up in there into all the locations that it goes. Once you put those uh, the flat clips in, it'll hold itself up. So that way you don't have to be the person holding all the weight. Just try to make sure you get your, all your holes lined up before snapping those in, because otherwise you may have to pull it back down to get them all to line up. But everything's lined up, so now we're just gonna reinstall all the nuts that we had removed. All right, now if you haven't already done so, we are gonna take the entire plate bracket off of here. You're gonna get a new plate bracket that will install in the front of your front hitch when you're not using it. So to take this off, we actually just need to remove the two fasteners that are located up here on the top. That's what's holding it in place. So we're gonna zip those out with a T30 Torx. And as you get those loose, the entire assembly We'll just lift off of there and we can set that aside. So now with an extra set of hands, we're gonna lift our hitch into position. We do need to feed it through the hole in our plate, or in our air dam, and then line it up between our two plates. Now once you get it between the two plates, we're gonna take a bolt, we've placed a flat washer on it, and we're gonna slide it through. And we're then gonna slide on a lock washer and a nut and once we get one started on each side our hitch will hold itself up making it easier to install the rest of our hardware once we get that one through the rest of these are going to go in a lot easier these are going to be the smaller shorter bolts in your kit they are standard when you're looking at the top we can see the dashes there we're going to have five of these on each side and all of them want to insert from the outside towards the inside. And you might have to tweak your hitch just a little bit back and forth to get everything to line up. And of course, on the other side, they're all gonna get that lock washer and nut. So now that we've got all of our hardware loosely installed, we can go back and, torque and tighten and then torque all of our hardware. There is a specific order we wanna tighten it down in. We're gonna start with the bolts that slid through where our tow hooks went. Those will go first, the tow hook attachments. Then we'll do the large bolts that are below that. Then we're just gonna kind of step down and do this one right here, the M12. And then after that, all the ones going on the plate. And when we do that in that order, so when I do the uh, tow hook ones, I'm gonna do the other side tow hook. Then I'm gonna move to these, make sure I do both sides. We're gonna do both sides when we do those.
And now that we've got our hitch all the way torqued down and everything, we got a couple of little things left. The push pins that we had removed, we can now reinstall. Those will slide back up in there and push those back in place. And then we also have an additional fastener we're gonna be adding here in the middle. Since we cut out some of the support there, we don't want this flapping and making a bunch of noise. And if you pull down on it a little bit, you'll see there's a tab right there with a hole in it. And we want to drill a hole to match that so that way we can bolt it up in there. Here we have a small alignment tool that will sit on our hitch just up against the inside of the receiver there and that'll put that hole right where we need it to be to drill out. So we'll just line that up, get our drill bit up in there and drill our hole right there. We're then going to do the same thing over on the other side here for this one so we can attach it over here. And we're using a quarter inch bit to drill that out because that's the size we'll need for the hardware that we're going to secure it with. You're going to get six screws that look like this, but two of them are going to be slightly longer. We're going to use the slightly longer ones right here at this location. Go ahead and slide a washer on it. We can slide this up through our plastic. That's a little bit tight. We'll probably just thread it up through there. We are going to use a number four Allen key to tighten these down with. And we'll just thread it right up through the plastic there. If it's kind of tight, it'll just thread right in. And then we'll just line that up there. On the opposite side, we'll take another flat washer, set that in place. And then we'll take one of the nylon locking nuts that come included with the kit and thread it on there. Once you get your nut started on there, we'll use an 11 millimeter wrench to hold the nut and tighten down the bolt. And then we're just gonna do the same thing over on the other side here. And then right here at the front where we had removed our factory license plate bracket, we're not gonna be using those anymore since we have the one that slides in our hitch. So you get these little black caps, they just simply poke in there to cover up the holes, keep out dirt and debris, and then just to make it look nice. And the last thing you need to do is just install your plate onto your bracket. We've got one of the e-trailer plates on here, so I just used two real quick just to secure it on there. We will be moving over the customer's real plate uh, after for the fact. And you do get enough hardware to secure it to all four holes, but just for demonstration purposes, we're just using the two top ones here today. You also get a 5 8 inch hitch pin and clip included with it for securing your license plate or whatever accessories that you're planning on using here at the front. And that completes our installation of Torque Lift's front hitch on our 2022 Ram 2500.